Worlds 2024 is finally here. 100 Thieves, yes, we are a part of it. So let's go over everything that you need to know for 100 Thieves, expectations, what to expect. And if you're new to the organization, don't worry, I've got the history covered for you. Welcome back to The Rendezvous. So let's give an introduction to those that might be new around here, those that are newer 100 Thieves fans. We haven't been the world since 2022, so if you're any time after that point, you've never seen the organization attend an event like this, and it's exciting. Going back to 2018, whenever the roster actually did qualify to Worlds in its first year in the LCS, that was the Meteos, the Afro move. There was drama with ADC between Cody Sun and Ricara, but nevertheless, they went to Worlds with the expectation of maybe it could happen, but a lot of people were down on this roster in particular. 2018 was a great Worlds for North America as a whole. Obviously, Cloud9 gets to the semifinals after going through play-ins. 100 Thieves was seen as the weakest of our three teams, but there was an outside chance. Back then, it was the group stage, so there were three other teams in your particular group. You had to finish top two out of the four, and then you would move on. The way it would work is you would play three games over four days as every team across all four groups would play, and then you would cram all three of your final matches in on one day. They would basically do like a double round robin, best of one, and the second half of the round robin was just all on a single day. It was pure madness. But unfortunately, a lot of the results were predetermined with these groups, and expectations very much were like we would get smashed. Worlds 2018, in hindsight, really nothing to scoff at. We went 1-2 and two in week 1, where we beat the minor region team, but then we lost to the two major region teams, which included Invictus Gaming and Fnatic. Fnatic and Invictus in 2018, both the finalists of the entire event. So the fact that we went two and four there, quite honestly, nothing to scoff at. But it unfortunately set the precedent of, okay, we weren't the best going into that world. So people were a little bit weary, but we made it back again in 2021, the year that we go in as the first seed for the entire LCS. We won. Could we do something there? Maybe, but we notably have EDG in our group as well as T1. EDG would go on to 3-0 the first week, T1 finishing 2-1 with a loss to EDG, and we were sitting there at 1-2. We took care of business against the team that we needed to with the minor regions again, but the question was, could we do something in the second week to maybe cause an upset? Everybody was counting us out, like we didn't really have a chance, but that all turned on its head after the very first game of that second round robin, where we were able to beat the undefeated EDG. The problem was we would then need T1 to still uh, lose a game or make up some ground. We would get our chance later on, and unfortunately, we weren't able to do it. T1 was also able to secure a win over EDG, meaning that EDG would have two losses, T1 would have one, and we would finish three and three. So a bit unlucky, and at the end of the day, EDG would go on to win the entire tournament. So once again, two straight years, two straight times, where we have had the winner of Worlds in our group. So again, nothing to scoff at until we get to 2022. 2022 was a disaster for everybody. All three teams across the LCS finished with the same record of one in five. We were three and 15 as a region, 100 Thieves. We were probably the most shameful out of everybody purely because we were the only team that had a minor region team with us. I think this was the year that they increased the pool to like four and four for LPL and LCK. And because of that, when we lost a game to a minor region, it felt even worse but it wasn't actually at the end of the day as bad as everywhere else. So three times of attending Worlds prior to this, three exits in the group stage, no positive records, our best finish being three and three. I'll be honest with you, before looking those up, I had the perception that we weren't a great Worlds team, but the truth is we actually got close quite a few times. 2022 just being unfortunately one that you just kind of have to toss away a little bit. But of note, of all of those Worlds runs, we never once came in as the third seed. We never had a chance to warm up a little bit in play-ins, which we are going to need this time around, without a doubt. We have the youngest squad of anybody. We got our butts handed to us by FlyQuest of the major regions. I think we are probably considered the weakest team of all four. Even when you look at Mad Lions out of Europe, they were able to take a series off of G2 in playoffs. So there is that like potential with them that you're seeing like, okay, they have these highs that you could potentially see. We have not shown that against the teams that are going to Worlds and are of Worlds caliber, but that makes sense. We are young. We are a rookie squad. Sniper going to his first Worlds at the age of 17. Quid going to his first Worlds at the age of 19 and only his second year of playing, his like first year and a half total. Tomo 
and Ayla. Ayla, despite playing in a different region as well, first time at Worlds for them. River is our only veteran. Of which River has made some magic at Worlds before in terms of like pop off performances. Will this meta suit him? I'll put the solo queue accounts of all of our players here on the right. The logos might be a little bit small. But honestly, there's been a ton to watch leading up to this event. We've been able to see Quid and Sniper and River a ton in both the in houses and champions queue that are over there as well as solo queue. Quid notably going on a massive massive win streak to start all of this off despite the fact that we are probably the least ex like the team with the least expectations of the major regions it also feels like we are probably one of the most exciting to watch people including dom ls cadrill everybody they're all excited to see hundred thieves grow and play there's no expectations for us to go ultimately that far but there is an expectation for us to get out of play -in. i'm drawing that line now i don't care if we are young at the end of the day, play-ins at Worlds is actually a very easy thing to get out of. All we need to do is be literally one of the top four out of the PCS 1 and 2 seed, the VCS 1 and 2 seed, and Mad Lions. I mean, that's literally, we're not going to, we shouldn't have to worry about Latam or CB LOL given the history of our matchups against them. You never know. I could be jinxing us a little bit there, but even Sniper in all of the interviews that he has done over the last week seems very confident heading into this. Not making it out of play-ins, despite like us having issues and having volatility would still be considered a massive failure for the region. I don't see a world where that ends up happening, but I think we do get into Swiss stage. Once we get into Swiss stage, then it becomes a little bit more sus. And then it's a, can we get a win? Even last year, whenever Team Liquid imploded, they were still able to get one win, which I think actually was against Gam. They went out pretty quick, but I think they won a single game. We should be able to win a single game, hopefully, right? Because in theory, even if we go towards the bottom, we would end up playing against like a PSG, a Mad Lion, somebody like that. And getting a win there in Swiss stage would be a big step up for the boys. Look, Worlds is ultimately a larger than life event in esports. It is the biggest tournament in the world. It might not, uh, actually, I think it is now the biggest prize pool tournament potentially with uh, Dota, the international kind of falling down and not having the crowdfunding that they used to have. We're definitely up there now. But the prestige of Worlds is unlike any other tournament in the industry. With that comes a whole set of nerves. Sniper, in his interview with Travis Gafford and even on Pros, talked about how, yes, the nerves did get to him a little bit at LCS Finals. Now, the advantage that he'll have on this one is that we're playing from the LEC studio the entire time. Unless we make it to quarters, then we'll play in an arena. But up until that point, yes, we are in the LEC studio of like 300 people, which is just tragic some other quick notes to touch on before we get into like the final remarks of everything the timeline of what you can expect this will be released on monday i'm filming this on friday if any news happens since then i will try and edit into this video but tomorrow the world song will come out lincoln park is apparently doing it for 100 these fans i doubt there's going to be any mention of us specifically the story will likely be following that of t1 either as an organization or them individually i can't imagine riot choosing any other like route that they want to go with it but the world's anthem is like the official like, kickoff for the tournament for many people so be sure to tune in i think it's at like 11 a.m eastern time it's a big celebration for everybody in low esports i'm assuming there are probably going to be team icons and emotes maybe i'll let you know if those go on sale but as of right now i haven't seen anything about them haven't heard anything i actually i think in the low esports post a bit ago they said they're doing away with them if i'm not mistaken so as of right now the only way that you can actually support your 100 these fandom in game during worlds is either one of the old icons or by getting the Akali emote, which is still on sale. I also don't think you can get our Worlds jersey, which is a little odd. Like, I get that it's an Adidas collab, and, like, 100 Thieves is very well known for, like, keeping things exclusive, but, like, I don't know. Honestly, I think we have the best jersey out of all three teams going so far. Team Liquid hasn't revealed theirs, but normally it's, like, something white in line with the style that they're already doing throughout the year, and while their jersey is clean, I'm not sold that they're going to be able to top what we've done. I think our jersey clears FlyQuest by a mile. FlyQuest is, like, very, like, Brooklyn uh, wardrobe style and like it, it fits but their MSI jersey in my opinion was 20 times better than their world's one we clear them there so if there's one win that we take away from this tournament no matter what it's that we got the best jersey so that's good I'm trying to think if there's any other news around 100 Thieves League of Legends over the past few days content wise there's also a bunch of uh, little snippets with Crocs interviews with individual players kind of like giving them awards from the regular season but we're kind of on the worlds now so if you want to check those out go right ahead anyways let's close this out look this is going to be a very interesting tournament for 100 Thieves where all the attention by all means is going to be on the younger players to see if they can develop and there's always a lot of backlash that comes from the general lcs community we've already seen it with whippo and some of the remarks that he's had which definitely go over the top but lcs and european fans seem to be a little bit on edge 
if there are points where the team does stumble or does slip up a little bit, be sure to support them on social media. Tweet at them, post support in any way, shape, or form that you can to let them know. They probably won't be looking at social media all that often, but it can kind of get to the coaches and some other people to try and help feed the word into them. Worlds, if it goes wrong, can be a very toxic time for LCS fans. For 100 of these fans here, I'm gonna have a rendezvous every after every single match that we play to try and keep the spirits up if it goes wrong. If it's going well, obviously, like basking in the moment, because why will we not? But just remember to show your support at all times. Dogpiling onto negativity does not help, especially at a world where the expectation is to learn. The expectation is to just get out of plans and then try and do something at Swiss stage. Sniper even acknowledged that himself, to support the boys, rep the boys, and again, welcome to Worlds 2024. Let's make this a memorable one. Let's make this a fun one. And why not? I want to say cause an upset because I feel like we could. We have the guts to be able to do it. We could be seeing Sniper's Riven. He's played it a few times now in Champions Q and Solo Q. So who knows? Gotta have faith. Never lose the faith.